Can you scoot up a little bit? Uh, yeah. Please. When we talked to you six weeks ago, whatever it was, you were like, hey, I welcome the pressure. That, you know, everyone I know that they talk about the offensive the line, they're ready for it. We're now in the spring practice. How do you feel about that? Really good. Guys have been competing. Uh, we got to play the game a little bit today for the first time versus the defense, so it was good for the kids to go out and play the game. Um, but still the same. Um, I mean, we're rolling a lot of guys, so I mean, I know that question will come up at some point. The answer is I still don't know. We're rolling a ton of guys with the ones, um, and we like it that way. Um, so you're getting to see some young guys that haven't played do some things. You're getting to see some guys, you know, do some positions that they might not have started at that they're moving to. Um, but yeah, just getting out and to be able to kind of part part a whole of individual group work, working with Larry's guys. We're doing a lot of stuff with the D line, technique and fundamental work, and then getting to play the game a little bit at the end. That's been a lot of fun. Just about yeah. the position, Josh Fryer is probably the most <laughs> sure thing to be a left tackle. What have you seen from him? Um, he seems like a pretty confident guy. Right yeah, Ryan said it really well after practice. Um, you know, you get to a spring and it's a new for everybody. Right? We have everybody, you know, new titles, new age groups, new positions, new uh, freshmen a sophomore. Um, I think Josh so far in spring has just embraced that role of like, okay, I'm now the next year guy. I'm the veteran guy in the room now. I've, I've played some, I've been around the expectations. So he's probably embraced that the best just in his preparation, in his um, overall understanding or being proactive in things that may happen um, to play that position out on the edge. Um, and so I've been really pleased so far with just kind of how he's he's trying to take the next step in training and the limited practices at and how hard he goes and then situationally when to use what technique and those things. You've seen that come out of him a little bit. Justin, I asked uh, Coach Day about Carson, or excuse me, just about the center position, like who's coming on there. And he said Carson Hensman, the guy that's really coming on. What are you seeing out of Carson Hensman and just kind of what stands out about him? Uh, the same deal. They're all he's getting thrust in. I mean, if you think he's not even been here 12 months, so 12 months ago from now he was still like bailing hay and knocking icicles off the barn up in Wisconsin. Um, so now there's Mike Hall and Ty Leak and and all those guys in front of him. Um, just getting out and competing that way has been good to see. Because you never know how these guys are going to go until you let them go play the game. And so obviously we don't have games, but taking those live reps. Um, he's embraced it. He's won some and he's lost some. So you got to learn from those, right? Um, and the same with Victor. I mean, Victor played tackle last year. We brought Victor in here to be the inside guy. So now we just talked about a little bit with Josh, like adding the element of putting a ball in your hand and blocking the nose guard at Ohio State. You know, there's some adjustment there, but um, I think those guys that really haven't done a lot are, are biting into it. Um, you know, Toby's floating around and getting some center reps too and doing a good job. He's another year older, so his understanding's helping him play a little better. Um, and then you got Josh Padilla, who's the same guy. He played tackle at, at Wayne, and now all of a sudden, hey, here's the football. So you're playing one-handed. Um, hmm. And it's not wrestling in the shot for a state tournament, and it's not playing, you know, Springfield anymore. You're, you're playing a really good defense. Um, so all those guys, have, they've, they're taking their lumps, and they've shown some really good stuff so far. Center's kind of the quarterback of the, of the offensive line. I mean, how, how important is it to find a guy by the end of spring that you're really confident in? Uh, I is mean, not? Yeah, you'd like to, but you can't timestamp it. I mean, you go the other way. We've got, I mean, this was practice four. So we have 11 practices left here and another 30 plus in fall camp. So you could look at it that way. It's kind of the tone you take or the, but no, the expectation for these guys right now is we've talked about it in spring ball and um, you just got to embrace the process, right? If you love the process, the process will love you back. So today was practice four and we played ball and we had some good reps and we had some bad reps. So how do we enhance the good ones and how do we get better off the ones we lost? Justin, jo Josh mentioned about midway through last year where his confidence was really kind of clicked. Have you seen a difference in him from, from midway through last year to now? Well, we talked about that last year with Josh. Um, being number six is the hardest position to be for linemen because he wore 41. He went in some of our extra lineman packages. Knowing he was right there, but you really couldn't get over the cusp, right? And guys take that two ways. They go in cruise control and put the governor on, or they just keep fighting and battling because I'm the next up guy and it might be me. And then he got his start the one week. You know, he played Indiana, played the home school, you know, home state school, which was good. And so, yeah, I think him feeling like starting to bear fruit, like I can really do this. This is the buildup. My knee's feeling better. I'm off the injury. A lot of those things do. And then just as I alluded to before, where now he's, he's playing the position to own the position. He's not just taking reps. He's using the reps, you know? Um, and that, that's shown with him so far. How have you seen his chemistry with Donovan 
Uh, those guys, our room, like chemistry wise, like we, I say this all the time, broken record. We have great dudes in our room. So for them to be hanging out outside of here and the brotherhood and all those things, like that's not cliche and BS here. Like that's, they live that. Um, so from a chemistry, like at the end of the day, whether you like them or you don't, they, they love each other. Like the, the guard next to the tackle better know what the hell they're doing because we got to put the guys together most of the time. So continually working on it, but it's really good. I know you can't speak about specific recruits but how is offensive line recruiting going for you and how much do you think it's going to help having like Paris Johnson being a first round pick and two other guys that are going to be high picks how much do you think that's yeah, I mean, that's going to help you guys I think all, you come to Ohio State to be a first round pick we offer kids to come to Ohio State to be the best version of themselves and so yeah I mean yeah it's going to help recruiting yeah what is the change of recruiting you got to evaluate the right people you got to bring in the right people and you got to make sure that you develop the kids and you got to build relationships that way with the players in the room as they continue to grow. I mean, you look at that like you, my answer to that is like you got Tiger, you got Carson, you got George, you got Avery. Like I wasn't involved with those guys at all except for Carson and making sure we brought him home at the end. Right? Um, so your common ground is they want to be great. We want to make it great. This is a place to be great. If you have that opportunity and you take it, then that generally doesn't fail, right? And so now you look at these young kids that we have becoming it. They all should be going to prom in six weeks, right. not getting ready for the spring game on April 15th, right? So they're out here doing that, and they were they felt comfortable enough to do that, and we obviously felt comfortable enough to make them want to do that. So to see Paris and Luke and Dewan doing what they were doing the other day, and then now knowing I have that opportunity if I work hard like that, if I execute that way. Yeah, that's that's great for recruiting. How do you feel like 2024 recruiting is going for the O line and, and beyond? Have we signed? Is that the sign that's coming? No, in no, December? you can't speak on specifics. Yeah. Just like in general, how do you feel like recruiting is going? Are you happy with it? Oh, I love recruiting. I love talking to high school coaches. I love when kids come to visit. Recruit. Yeah, that's the lifeblood. Recruiting in general. Put a number on them. I love recruiting. Talk Absolutely. To, sorry, talking to Tegra, um, one thing he talked about last year when he came in, he wanted to take everyone's head off. He wanted to attack, attack, attack. And he had to learn to stay calm against the weak defensive ends like JT and Jack. How have you seen him grow in that area? And then what's the importance of balancing those two things for an offensive line? That's a big, long, loaded question. Um, we go off base bin balance and burst. And so trimming the fat and getting every, every guy you get comes in and they're elite. Like Tegra's an elite level player in high school. He's an All-American, he, the All-Star games, he does all this stuff. Then he shows up here and he's Tegra, the freshman. So yeah, for him to see that, good. Now, how do you get back to playing to your level? You work through those base fundamentals. Ryan talked about today. We have, we have great effort and technique. That's what we're focusing on today. So if you're a high-level player and you have great effort and great technique, then you'll produce high level. Younger guys on top of that, though, have, well, do I go right or left? Do I have this guy or that guy? Do I have this? So there's some more stuff that's spinning in their head. So the, the, the more you can dive into that and slow that down, then they're able to play faster again. So I'm really happy with what he's doing and really unhappy with two or three plays that he did today because he didn't block the right guy. But his attitude's great. He's so passionate about being his best version of himself. He's so passionate about being a great football player, and we're just trying to stack those days on top of each other. Right Carson, now. Yeah. Carson specifically, did you see a light come on in him in bowl practice? I mean, did you? Luke Whipler indicated that yesterday. Uh, I mean, and has it continued to brighten, I guess? Uh, I mean, you saw flashes Yeah. Um, to where he was doing things that maybe true freshmen shouldn't do all the time or normally don't do. So if you mean like light coming on there, like, yeah, you watch some clips and be like, oh, this was – and that was good. Who is that? Oh, that was Carson. All right, here we go. Yeah. But I think the natural, that's a natural progression for a guy. Just say like we talk about with Tegra, like he wants to be really good. He's on him. He's his hardest critic now. Um, and so he's in extra all the time on top of the film study. And, you know, he's, he's all over it. He wants to be really good that way. So that's going to continue to happen again. I, like I said, I'm just repeating myself, but like he's a high level talent yeah. that just is figuring out how to play at 296 pounds just figuring out how to play the full speed. But if you continue to work, then it, it's going to keep happening. And, but, and these guys are human, too, as you are. I mean, when they see a the vacancy kids. there. Yeah. But when they see a vacancy there, as opposed to there's a, an entrenched dude, I'm going to, you know what I mean? I mean, like yeah. Luke Whipler for two years was a, pre, a pretty good player. You know? yeah. I mean, does that, do you notice that change their attitudes? You know? uh, I mean, I think, it becomes, becomes, I, I think it becomes more real. Yeah. I and mean, all of a sudden with a guy like now, like you're fighting for your life and to be the guy versus, yeah. Well, it's not just another rep. Uh, dang it, I didn't get it. But maybe there's another one. I got time, and then now all of a sudden the time is now to try to grab it. Yeah, there, there's, but it's all positive. It's it's a good fight of 
Like we talked about that at practice. You know, everybody, a lot of guys are fighting for their, their football life right now. What does that mean? Like there's open doors, there's open spots. How do I go get them? Yeah, just we asked you about. Uh, Zen was talking about how you kind of give these guys a long way this spring to, to make some mistakes and build on them. Is that <coughs> kind of an adventure for you? Knowing that, that last year, you were maybe a little bit doing that with Ferris, but knowing how as polished Ferris was, he's already considered what he is. Uh, now you're kind of giving these guys a little bit of a, a leeway to make those mistakes now. And, well, they need to learn from him. I think that's what with him. Like, you, you, you know, in the fall, you know, you, you win or you lose. In the spring, there's win or loser drills, but you got to learn why you lost it. So I think that's what he's saying of, you know, no, we don't want them to make mistakes, but, like, why did I make that mistake? I don't need, there's no, you know, I need to sit and figure out, well, maybe because of this or that. Like, was it my technique? Was it my understanding of the play? Whatever that may be. Um, and then they have to go do that and learn from that, but then they can't be repeat offenders. So like you make a mistake, okay, great, learn from it. The next time that shows, the same thing can't happen again. How do I correct it? How do I get better with that? Um, and so, like starting with today and then Saturday, we'll get you know get a little bit of a scrimmage going on. That'll be really good for those guys going to play the game and then understand like, oh, I, I lost that rep and it was a sack, it was a TFL or look what I, I used my technique, I did that and, and we made the play. Do you shorten that leash every? Do you shorten that leash every day now through April fifteenth? In, in regards to like, I mean, we don't accept the mistakes. Is that what you're saying? Like, we mean by shorten the leash. Yeah, like, like, you're kind of giving, like, Zen said that you kind of give him the runway to, okay, cor to correct the mistakes. By April 15th, you want to see no mistakes at all. Yeah, absolutely. That's what you're striving for. Just so I said that you don't want to be a repeat offender. I missed the rep. I missed, you know, Jack beat me in this pass rush. Why did Jack beat me in this pass rush? Not because, well, Jack's a really good player. There's a reason for everything. So, Identifying that, seeing that, and then correcting that technically, fundamentally, is it schematically where we've got to sit there and I got to say, you know what, I got to put you in a better situation. Um, but yeah, you're, you're trying to dwindle those down through spring. We have a couple more questions, folks. About Josh Fryer's confidence. When did he give you the confidence that now he's the guy who it seems like maybe his job to lose at best tackle? Uh, I haven't said that. So if he said that too, I'm for sure. I'm sure. Hopefully he didn't say that either. Um, he's building his confidence, which will make him play better. Um, the nothing set in stone. I mean, it was just day four, like I just said. I think he walked up. We've got 11 left and plus another 30 some in the fall. So, um, but if he feels that way and is playing that way, then his play will accelerate and get better. Um, but last year, I mean, he was he was six and he was grinding and he was game ready every week. And we found ways to get him on the field. And when his number was called, you know, he he would go in and make those plays. And so now, when there's an open spot in front of him, that confidence should help propel him into saying, "This is my spot. I'm going to own it." It was clearly a decision made at some point that you know, last year he had spent all his time on the right side, either guard or tackle, and now he was Well, he played on the left and the tight end stuff, so I mean, that's yeah. right hand, left hand, so that, that, that helps moving guys from side to side. Um, you know, guards can play with both ways. Maddie Jones played some guard and some center, so you got to be, you got to play your five best, you know. So, yeah, the transition of that stuff will help, but he, he yeah, back to the initial point, he's, he's building a really good, confident foundation for him so he can play some high level ball. How Just do you see? How do you see uh, Jacob James factoring into the center competition once he's healthy? He's having a great spring for him, the best that he can. Every time I turn around, he's behind me. He's like, Coach, what's the call? Where's the fit? You see him watching the tape. He's doing exactly what he has to do to be ready to come in and compete in the fall, right? Um, and so I'm really happy with what he's doing. He's he's a pissed off bulldog sometimes sitting back there because you know he wants to be in there and he can't, and that's fine. But he's doing exactly what a guy that can't be taking the physical reps needs to be doing right now so that when he is, you know, given a leash and, and let, you know, let go to go play, he's doing a really good job with that. For Donovan Jackson, he mentioned that there was a conversation in the winter with you two just about maybe switching to tackle, but then ultimately deciding to stay at guard. What did you take away from that conversation, his willingness to stay at guard for maybe the good of the group? Well, we just had a good meeting of like, he wanted to know what the plan was and what his, you know, what word we see with him because, you know, just like all the guys with Donnie, like Donnie's an elite level player and he wants to play that way. And Donnie's also a team guy, so he wants to do what would be best for the team. So our conversation off of that was just simply like, what do we see as our plan? And I mean, could Donnie put, yeah, Donnie could play all five positions. He's that athletic. He could play outside, inside. He could put the, he'd have to, you know, cut the things off his wrist, but he could snap if we needed him to. I mean, he's that smart and he's that athletic. Um, so just keep wiggling through spring. But I mean, right now he's, got, he's in a really good groove at, at the guard position. Um, enhancing his skill set, you know, maybe doing some more trigonometry stuff. Whereas a guy like Austin Sierra Belt is still using his abacus and counting one, two, and three, but they're both doing numbers right now, which is good. How have him uh, 
Josh and Luke may come along in the first couple of practice here? What you like about them? Um, all of them have come along. You know, these I alluded to earlier, like those, those freshmen and those rookies right now. April 15th should be about prom time normally for them. Instead, they're getting ready for a spring football game. Um, and so the, the extra practices and the, the stuff they're getting is good for all those guys. And the best thing about Luke and Austin and Josh and Miles all, like for mid-year guys, you haven't seen that like, whoa, overwhelming feeling yet. Um, the rest of it, yeah, they got a long way to go. Um, Josh is playing with a lot of confidence right now and he's working the game and he's, he's seeing the things that he can enhance and he's finding his warts that he's got to fix. Um, right, cool. And then, you know, a guy, you know, Georgie's doing a good job too behind him. You know, I mean, that's another guy that George has just now been here a year. So, I mean, George Fitzpatrick last year asked him about it, and he didn't know, you know, which shoe was right and left and how to tie him. And now he's 298, 302 pounds. He got his black stripe off today. You know, he's playing better just because he's another year mature and bigger and stronger. Um, and so just really excited and, and having fun where everybody's at a little different level, but everybody's getting better right now.